My goal today is to explore the outcome of searing the same cut of steak in three different pans, cast iron, stainless steel, and carbon steel. There is some debate on which is best, and of course, one may be better than all of them. Given there will be other variables like whether you have a gas, electric, or induction stove, or if you're cooking over an open fire, I'm gonna cook the steaks using the same technique for all three, which is searing them on medium-high heat with generous movement to gradually create a crust, and finishing by butter basting with rosemary and garlic. The steaks I'll be using are boneless USDA Prime ribeye fillets, which are different from your more common ribeye steaks or rib steaks. The difference is that the cap and the tail are removed, and what you end up with is a well-marbled cut that has very little gristly fat. I want to point out that I'm not going to get into theories on different cuts of steak or all the schools of thought on searing steak. So because this is an experiment of sorts, I'm going to go for consistency. And I'm going to do this by letting all three steaks sit out for about 30 minutes before searing. I'm going to season all three with salt and coarsely ground black pepper, and also coat all three with olive oil. Again, oil types are debated as well, but I think it's false to say that olive oil is not a high heat oil. I'll begin with what I have the most experience using, which is my trusty cast iron skillet. First, of course, salt your steak generously with kosher salt. I'm using the Diamond Crystal brand. Take a good pinch of it, and from about the height of your eye, sprinkle generously. Yes, make it snow. Salt the other side, and add pepper as well. Then blot your steak on the plate to pick up any remnants of the salt and pepper. And finally, pour some olive oil over the top and let it spill on the plate so you can get the bottom coated as well. Of course, you'll do this by blotting again. Next, I'm gonna heat my cast iron skillet on medium high, and this should take roughly five minutes. If your cast iron pan has a thin coating of oil from reseasoning, just like mine did, you'll see some smoke. Another way to gauge whether the pan is hot enough is to hold your hand over it, and if it's uncomfortable, you're probably ready to put your steak in. And patting it down like I just did helps ensure an even crust formation. Like I mentioned, I'm going to use the more in fashion method of moving my steak around here and there, and flipping the steak about every minute, depending on how the crust is forming, of course. And of course we're doing this in an effort to form the perfect crust. And it looked like it was beginning to happen when I flipped it over right there. And throughout you'll see that I do test it with my thermometer and by poking it with my finger. Right here I may have turned it a bit soon, but I left it that way and just let that other side really build that crust. And as you'll see in a moment here, that crust on the other side was building up very nicely. I don't have exact cooking times for you here. I went by feel a lot and didn't set a timer and just was looking for the right coloration and the right sort of bounce on the meat. Also. To make sure I wasn't wasting a lot of steak, I used my thermometer to make sure I wasn't going over temp. I began basting when I thought the caramelization that was happening on the steak could go no further without the aid of the butter, and to slow down the process and to make sure that caramelization doesn't turn into a burn. I basted the steak for about two or three minutes. I was trying to cook this to about medium because either my wife or my daughter was gonna eat the steak and they like their steaks medium. And a steak cooked to medium will be at 140 degrees when you serve it. I took this steak out when its internal temperature read at about 120 degrees. I took it out at that temperature to rest on the cutting board for at least 10 minutes, hoping that it would come to 140 degrees before I cut into it. And when I did cut into it, it looked like I'd gotten to about medium rare, which was actually kind of a nice pleasant surprise for me because I prefer my steaks medium rare. So I had to make a promise to my wife and daughter that the next steak would definitely be cooked to medium, the way they like it. Spoiler alert, they did like the next steak a lot. And after all, we did have three steaks that I was cooking individually and filming, and we couldn't eat them all together at once. So we ate steak in shifts. I probably should have waited for an internal temp of about 130 before I took it out of the pan, since we got medium rare. I will say that this steak was a little past medium rare for me, but it was still tender and well seasoned. All right, we're gonna move on to the stainless steel skillet which is the pan that I have the least experience with when it comes to cooking steak. Of course, we'll begin with salt, pepper, and olive oil, and then we will place it in our pan on medium-high heat, just like before, and let it sear. And just like before, we're gonna move that steak around in the pan and flip it about every minute or so to form that perfect crust. Having said that, I did go about two minutes on this first side, 
and began to notice that excessive smoke. Because we're using olive oil, which has a lower smoke point temperature than let's say grapeseed oil, we're getting a lot of smoke. I used olive oil because I wanted to use an oil that everyone might have at home. And for consistency, I didn't want to use different oils with different pans. Even though the steak was browning quicker in the stainless steel pan, I didn't lower the temperature. What I did was I moved it around a lot more and started basting a lot earlier. And I'm pleased to say that the idea of moving the steak a lot more in a very hot pan or a pan that conducts heat very rapidly like the stainless steel one does did work. I was able to form a very beautiful crust. But as I mentioned earlier, I started basting with the butter much sooner than I did with the cast iron skillet. And boy did that butter smoke at first. Again, I didn't reduce the heat, but I did move a lot faster than I did with the cast iron skillet. Meaning I was basting faster, I was turning the steak faster, I was checking the temperature faster, it all happened very quickly. I would say that the steak cooked about two minutes sooner than the one in the cast iron skillet, but I didn't have a timer. Like I said, I really wanted to go with feel here. And maybe it didn't cook faster, maybe it just felt that way because I was rushing, rushing, rushing to make sure that the steak didn't burn which could mean that the cast iron is more gentle on the steak. Some say that cast iron distributes heat more evenly, which I don't think is what they mean. I think they mean that it delivers it more consistently, that it doesn't cool down or heat up rapidly. And because of this, I think the cast iron skillet doesn't deliver the heat as intensely as the stainless steel pan does. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to butter melting and steak basting here. And yes, that melted butter does look very brown, but I can tell you right now that nothing was burnt and the nutty flavor of the butter did come through beautifully. And when it was finished, I let it rest for 10 more minutes on the cutting board. And when I cut into it, what I had achieved was a perfect medium, which is exactly what I was going for since my wife and daughter like their steak medium. I want to point out here that for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to use an oversized fork. It was kind of a bad idea. It makes the steak look tiny, and you can't really tell without comparison. And I switched knives. I used my good old Lamson because serrated steak knives don't work. They just tear the meat apart. And take a look at that. That is a perfect medium, I would say. Some would argue otherwise, but my wife and daughter were very happy, as was I. And even though it was cooked to medium, the steak was very, very juicy and very tender. Okay, let's wrap this up with our third and final pan, the carbon steel skillet. Compared to the stainless steel skillet, I only have a little more experience with this pan. So just like the last two pans, this pan was preheated on medium high. And I noticed something right away. This carbon steel pan, though somewhat thinner than the stainless steel skillet, and definitely thinner than the cast iron one, was rather gentle with the steak. And take a look at this. When I slow everything back down to real time, look how slowly the smoke is leaving the pan compared to how fast it was leaving the stainless steel skillet with the last steak. What resulted from this was a much more gentle formation of the crust and a much less hurried cook. And though I was flipping and turning the steak just as much as I did with the last two pans, it felt like I was doing it in longer intervals with the carbon steel skillet. I'm not sure what it is about this pan. It might be that the metal throughout the pan is the same thickness. It also might be that this pan is a little bit wider than the stainless steel skillet and the cast iron pan, which are both at about 10 inches. This one's just a little over 11. And that measurement is taken at the top edge of the pan. And as you can see, when I put the butter in the pan, there wasn't that much smoke. The butter just melted and it melted pretty quickly. All in all, I felt that the carbon steel skillet was the most forgiving and the most friendly to use since it was light. And the final result coming out of the carbon steel pan was perfect. And I was pleasantly surprised that what I thought would be a steak cooked to medium ended up being medium rare. And like before, I let this steak rest for 10 minutes before cutting into it. And also like before, and for the sake of consistency, I took the steak out when its internal temperature read 120 degrees. All right, let's recap here. Now with the cast iron skillet, we got a medium rare steak that was probably cooked just a little bit past medium rare, but not quite medium. With the stainless steel skillet, we had to move a little quicker, but we got a perfect medium steak out of it. Now what's interesting about the stainless steel pan is, I also took the steak out of that pan when it read at about 120 degrees. 
But for some reason, maybe it was the intensity of the heat in the pan, that steak cooked to a perfect medium. And finally, with our carbon steel skillet, I think what we got is a perfect medium rare steak. All three were incredibly delicious, and my family really liked eating steak in shifts. I really do hope you liked this video, and if you did, please do subscribe, and please do like and follow. And thank you so much for watching.